guys so welcome to today's video as you can tell by the title I am showing you my current foundation routine and giving you tips and tricks on how to receive a flawless complexion now keep in mind the products that I'm going to be using on my face may be different from what you use on yours I am more combination skin type so I have very oily areas of my t-zone and then the outer perimeters of my face are more normal so if you have drier skin or even normal skin ranging on the drier side just keep that in mind that the products that I use are going to be more mattifying so you may not want to use those on your skin because they're just going to make you look too dry and they're just not going to work with your skin type so you're going to want to use anything for more of a natural finish something that's more hydrating or even something that gives you a really glowy radiant finish that way you're not looking so dry but you can totally follow the tips and tricks that i give because it'll still apply to your foundation routine you'll just be gearing it towards the products that you use that suits best that uh, suits your skin best i should say so yeah let's go ahead and get started all right, so I zoomed you in a little bit more so you can get all close and personal to my face. So as you can see, I do have some friends that decided to pop up. These are actually like a couple like post acne, like scarring, like red marks because my skin scars so easily. And then this one is that time of the month and I feel like the camera is making it look a lot more red than what it is. So yay. So the first step that I'm going to go in with is priming my skin and I am using the Smashbox Photo Finish Smoothing Primer. Now before you touch your face, keep in mind that you're going to want to make sure that you have clean hands, make sure that you wash them with soap and water because if you don't have clean hands and you've been eating or you've been touching your phone or touching whatever else, that's going to spread bacteria across the skin, therefore causing clogged pores and breakouts. So before you touch your skin, always, always, always make sure that you have clean hands. I'm going to put a little bit on my hands and like I said earlier, my skin is more combination. So typically I would use more of a mattifying primer in my T-zone where I get oily, but sometimes my skin tends to freak out a little bit, especially during the winter time when it's more like dry outside. And if I use a mattifying primer, sometimes my foundation will look a little off, like the consistency of it, not so much cakey, but it'll just look like patchy in those areas. So it's been doing that lately, so I'm just gonna go in with a smoothing primer, which like the title says, is just going to smooth the skin so then your foundation lays smoother and you have a smoother base for your foundation to glide across. It's going to help with minimizing pores, fine lines, any texture. So I really recommend it if you have any texture on your skin um, and really anybody you can use a smoothing primer. You don't have to have a certain skin type for it. All right, so after I prime, um, I'm gonna go in with a color correcting concealer. Now this one is from NYX and it's going to be this green one here. Now I'm going to use this on my lovely little friends here. Um, you wanna use a green color correcting concealer for any redness that you may have because if you look at the color wheel for like the color theory, red and green are opposite. So going in with a green color concealer is going to help combat the redness. So just taking this and putting it on my red areas that I have. And also back to going and talking about a primer, I would recommend that everybody, no matter your skin type, uses a primer. Just because if you think about it, you're not going to paint the walls in your house without priming, right? That's just going to help the paint lay a little bit better and stay on better to my assumption same um same theory with going in with a foundation primer that's just going to help your foundation lay better and if you've never used a primer before there's a primer for practically anything there's color correcting primers there's mattifying ones smoothing ones radiant ones hydrating ones so there are a bunch of different primers for a bunch of different skincare concerns and then i'm just blending this out with my finger a little bit and don't worry, you're not going to see this green through the foundation because I'm gonna to go, to, go in with more concealer and add a little bit more coverage to it. Now, if you see me directing, like, directing my vision this way, it's because I'm also like looking in my mirror that's off to the side here to make sure that everything is blended out because it's kind of hard to see on my like little um, screen on my camera. All right, so next I'm going to go in with just a regular concealer that's my skin tone or about my skin tone, and I'm just going to dot that on top of the color correcting concealer just to add a little bit more coverage to it so that green doesn't shine through in any way. 
And then I'm just gonna tap that out with my finger. Also, when talking about your complexion, you want to make sure that you have a clean and moisturized face before going in with any sort of complexion product. The purpose being is because your foundation is going to lay better. And also keep in mind of the skincare that you're using too. I'm not saying to go out and buy like a $50 moisturizer if you can't afford it. If you can only afford something from the drugstore, that's fine. Just make sure it's something that's good and that's for your skin type. Now, if you're oily and you're not moisturizing, you need to moisturize. I've had some people tell me before, um, I don't use a moisturizer, I'm oily, I feel like it makes me too, you know, too greasy. You definitely still need to use a moisturizer with oily skin because if you're not using a moisturizer, then you're just making your skin more oily than what it needs to be because your skin isn't getting the hydration that it needs. So therefore it's overcompensating for the lack of hydration that it's getting and therefore making you oilier than what you really should be getting. Now, of course, your oiliness just isn't gonna go away from moisturizing, but it'll help decrease it a little bit. Also, keep in mind that your foundation is going to lay as good as your skincare routine is. So if you have a, let's be honest, a crappy skincare routine or you're doing nothing at all, then your foundation and your complexion products just aren't gonna lay as good as they would if you had like a better um, skincare regimen. And like I said, don't feel like you have to go out and buy a $50 um, like a moisturizer if you can't afford it. Just make sure that you're doing something for your skin type and that it's something that's good. All right, and then once we have that blended out, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of a translucent, um, like a loose powder, just a little bit. And then I'm going to just dot those areas just to set the um, concealer so then once we go on top with our foundation it's not going to move it around and then expose like the redness that we have now i say you want to go in with the smallest amount because you always 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 are going to go in with um, like cream products or liquid products before your powders because if you go in with powders and then liquids or creams it's just not going to lay right so that is why you go in with a little tiny bit all right, so next I'm gonna apply my foundation and I am using this one here from Dior. Let me get it to focus, there we go, from Dior. And this one is the Dior Forever Perfect Makeup Everlasting Wear Pore Refining Effect Foundation with sunscreen, SPF 35, and shine control. So this has been my favorite foundation within you know the past like year or two. I always find myself going back to this one um, it is going to be more of a luminous matte finish. So if you are normal, you could use this. If you're normal to dry, you may not be able to. It just really depends on how dry you are. But you could always try it out for yourself and see. And then I'm just going to stripe that on my face. And then this is more of a medium to full coverage foundation, which I personally like. I'm going in with my damp beauty blender. I'm going to buff this out. And if you watched my um, video on my face brushes and tools of how, of like my personal recommendations for getting a, um, your complexion, sorry, I like can't talk today. Um, you would remember that with a beauty blender, you're dabbing it into the skin versus swiping. Because if you swipe, it's just going to move the product around, it's just not going to be pressed into the skin, and it's just not going to lay right. Versus when, sorry, my earring's coming out. Versus when you dab it into the skin, that's going to help push the foundation into the skin, so it'll help it sit better and last a little bit longer. Now, if you don't like wearing a full coverage foundation, that's totally fine. You can go on with something that you really like, whether it's um, something more sheer or even something that's more of a tinted moisturizer. So feel free to go in with, ever, with whatever you like. All right, then you always wanna make sure that you're blending down your neck, just in case your foundation is an ex isn't an exact perfect match. You don't want to have that line of demarcation. Like nobody likes that look. <laughs> and then I don't know if I said this in the beginning or not, but I will list down below products that I think are good for different skin types. So if you're looking for something new, whether it's a concealer or a foundation or a powder, I will list those down below as well. So then you can check those out. And I personally know they're good because I've used them on other people. So they look out, you know, of course recommend something that I have used for myself and personally love. 
All right, so then once you get your foundation all blended into the skin, I'm going to take that concealer that I went in with earlier to cover up the color correcting concealer, and I'm just going to dot that on top of those blemish areas just to give them a little bit more coverage, and then I'm going to take my beauty blender and then just gently dab it into the skin. All right, so then once I have all those blended in, I'm going to go in with my concealer, and I'm going to go in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I'm sure you've heard of it before or have you seen it. It's a very popular concealer. It's a very full coverage matte concealer. So if you're on the drier side, this may not work for you, but I can list some concealers down below. Now I'm just going to put that underneath in my eye, and if you notice, it is quite lighter than my foundation. Now, I recommend going in one to two shades lighter than your foundation when you go in with concealer because that's just going to add dimension to your face and also help brighten up your under eye. Now, since my skin has been acting a little bit weird to where really mattifying products have been making me look a little like dry, I guess, I'm going to mix in another concealer as well. And this is the Josie Maron... There we go. Josie Maron Vibrancy Concealer. And this is infused with argan oil, so it's going to help give a little bit more of a natural hydrating finish, as well as keeping it with mattifying power with the Tarte Shape Tape. And then taking my same beauty blender, I'm going to press that underneath in my eye and into the skin. And I like to look up as well, because then it can help get into those creases that are underneath of your eye. And then I also blend back towards the temple almost in more of like an upward position. So then it provides more of like a lifted appearance to this to the face. And blend it down the sides of my nose. And just really press it into the skin. I'm also going to put it on my eyelids because this is how I personally prime for my eyeshadow. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want, if you prefer an eyeshadow primer but I like using a concealer, just blending a little bit of the excess that's on my sponge onto my eyelids because not only is it gonna help prime for my eyeshadow, but it's also like covering up any, like if you have like redness on your eyelids or if you have any veins, that's gonna help conceal that and then just make everything very even. Now for the other eye, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. Bring it down the side of my nose. And mixing my Josie Maron concealer. Which, if you have more normal skin or dry skin, you could totally use this Josie Maron concealer because, like I said, it is more of a natural finish, so it's not going to be anything that's going to be drying on your skin. And it is more of a, I believe, a full coverage concealer. If anything, medium to full coverage. So you'll get good coverage out of it, too. And I actually really like it. I've used it on its own as well, and it blended out really nice and the finish was really nice. All right, and then since I went lighter with my concealer, you're going to want to go on other areas of their face because you're not gonna to wanna to have bright under eyes and nothing else be even with that because it'll just look weird. So you'll go on your forehead, down the bridge of your nose, and then on your chin. So this is technically considered highlighting when you're going in with a concealer that is a shade or two lighter than your foundation. And then just mixing in the Josie Maron. And then we'll blend that out. So after I get my concealer all blended out, I'm going to go in and set my concealer and my foundation with a powder. Now, anybody of any skin type, I recommend that you do this because that's going to help set your concealer and your foundation. Not going in with a powder is just going to make your foundation lay sticky throughout the day and it'll move around more. But if you go in with a powder, like I said, it'll just help set everything. And it'll also create a smooth finish to the skin as well. So I'm going to go in with a translucent loose powder in my T-zone area to set my concealer. And I am going to go in with the Ben Nye Luxury Powder in the shade Cameo. Now it doesn't really add any color to your skin if you're going in with a translucent powder. It will wash you out just a little bit, but it won't add any extra color. And then I'm just dipping my Beauty Blender while it's still damp into the powder. 
And then I am going to just press that into the skin. Now a lot of translucent loose powders are going to be mattifying, but there are some brands out there that do have more of a natural finish powder. Like Cover FX has a really nice natural finish. Also Too Faced has their, I believe it's in their Born This Way line. They have a nice like natural finish powder as well. So I can list those down below too. And I prefer setting my face with my beauty blender because I just think it creates such a flawless finish. But if you prefer a brush, then you can totally use that instead. This is just my personal preference. Okay, and then this next step is totally optional. I just do it because I like to, but I'm going to go in with a pressed powder now, and I'm going to go in with this Hourglass one right here. It is their ambient lighting powder and the shade Dim Light, and I'm going to use a brush for this. Now, the Hourglass powders are really nice. If you have normal skin or dry skin, you can go in with this because it has a really pretty, um, like a sheer, not luminous, but more of a... Um, like an iridescence to it, I guess you could say. So it's not gonna be anything that's like dewy or glowy, but in the right light, it'll give you almost like a glow from within. And they have other colors as well. I just feel like the dim light is pretty universal for the most part. But I'm just going to set the outer perimeter perimeters of my face with this. But I prefer setting my entire face because if I don't, I just feel like everything like on the outer perimeters just feels a little bit more sticky versus like set. And the reason why I go in with a pressed powder versus a loose powder all over is because I don't want my loose powder to give me any sort of flashback in photography versus going in with like a pressed powder that may give you like a little tiny bit of color. I've never had any issues with it giving me flashback. So, you know, it's preference on whatever you want to do, but this is just what I personally like to do. All right, so then now that I have those steps complete, I'm going to do my brows off camera and then I will complete the rest of my foundation routine. Okay, so my brows are now filled in. If you wanna see how I fill in my brows or get any tips and tricks on how to fill in your own brows, I will list my brow tutorial down below. So if you haven't checked that out yet, then you can check that out for yourself. So moving on to the next step. So I definitely recommend this to anybody if you're going to set your eyelids with a concealer versus using an eyeshadow primer. And that is going in with a loose powder. It can be any loose powder. It can be a translucent one that you use on your face. It doesn't matter. But just go in and make sure that you set that concealer with some sort of a powder because you do not want your concealer getting creasy on you when you do your eyeshadow because then it's just gonna look like a mess. So set those eyelids. All right, so then next I'm gonna go in with some bronzer and I'm going to use the Too Faced Dark Chocolate Bronzer. Now I know what you may be thinking, geez, it's like super dark for how pale you are. Listen, I like to go in with it. I know how to work with it. I've been working with it for a while. Whenever I've gone in with a bronzer that is lighter on what I should be using for my skin tone, it's just not dark enough because I feel like I get so fair during the winter time. I like to really darken up my face but like I said, I know how to work with it. I go in with a minimal amount. So I wouldn't recommend this color to anybody of my skin tone or lighter than me, just because it, if you don't know how to work with it, it's just not gonna turn out right. So going in with my bronzer brush, I'm gonna tap off the excess and I'm going to start back here by the ear and then place that there. And then once I get some of the color off, I'm going to blend that forward into the cheek area. Now going in with a bronzer is just going to help add some color back into your skin because when we go in with foundation and then go on top of translucent powders and you know different powders, sometimes that can wash us out a little bit. So just going in with a bronzer is just going to add a sun-kissed glow to your skin. Now the difference between bronzing and contouring is that bronzer adds that sun-kissed glow. Contouring, that's not, that's not going to add any extra color, that's just mainly to sculpt. Contouring is just strictly in certain areas of the face versus bronzer. It's going to be in a wider area on the cheeks. All 
Now, just like contouring, you're gonna want to bronze up on your forehead as well. And I like to start up into the hairline and then once I get some of that color off of the brush, just blend it down a little bit towards the eyebrow. And then I blend it in towards the center of my forehead. Now for me, because I don't have, or at least I don't feel like I have a large forehead, for the center part, I like to keep that up more in the hairline versus dragging it down. Now, if you feel like you have a larger forehead, drag that down a little bit more because anything that you add darkness to, that's going to help it recede. And then anything that you add lightness to, that's going to help bring it forward. So that is basically the concept for contouring and highlighting, for instance. Receding and bringing forward slash bringing attention to. But you see how that just added some extra color to my face and adds a little bit of extra dimension to the skin. Now, another step that you can do is go in with that translucent powder that you went in with earlier. And then you can take this brush right here. It's more of like a flat top one. Now, if you watched my complexion brushes video, you would recognize this one. I'm going to take it and dip it into that loose powder. Tap off some of the excess. And if you feel like you got a little sloppy with um, either your contour or your bronzer, you can take this and then stamp it underneath of that contour bronzer. And that's just gonna help clean it up a little bit. And then you'll leave it sit there for you know, like a few seconds to like a minute or whatever. But this is like a reverse contouring. And I'm not trying to contour right now with my bronzer. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute while I do other areas of my face. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and bronze the center of my face, so in like my nose area, because if I have my bronzer on other areas of my face, I feel like the center of my nose is a little bit pale and needs a little bit more attention and color. So I'm going to go in with my little eyeshadow brush here. Now, if you remember from my complexion video, I use this for both eyes and face. Now I'm going to go in with more of a lighter colored bronzer that's a little bit more neutral. And I'm going to go in with this one from Marc Jacobs and it is the Tantastic Omega Bronzer. Now this one's a really nice one if you need more of like a neutral bronzer, not anything that's too dark or too orange. It's just really a really nice color. And then I'm going to dip that brush in it just a little bit and tap off the excess. And then I'm going to start up here, kind of like at the beginning of my brow and lightly bring it down the side of my nose. Now I'm not doing this for contour purposes. I am just doing this, like I said, to add a little bit of color to the center of my face. Now you wanna go on lightly down the side of your nose because the nose can be tricky sometimes. If you go on too dark or with too much, it's going to be very obvious on what you just did and quite frankly, you'll look a little whack. Okay, and then I also like to take that brush and that same bronzer and then go in the center of the bottom of my lip here and then just blend it downwards a little bit towards my chin because it'll give the illusion that you have a little bit more of a shadow underneath of that lip, which therefore will make it look like you have a little bit of a fuller bottom lip than what you really do. You see how it creates a little bit of a shadow underneath of there? Cool, right? Okay, so then since it's been sitting for like about a minute, I'm just gonna take a separate brush and then just wipe it away and it helps create more of a smoother line. And then I'll sometimes go back in with my bronzer brush and then just add a little bit along my jawline. I won't really add any extra bronzer, just what's ever left over on the brush. And then I like to bring it down my neck a little bit as well. Okay, so then the next step is adding blush to my cheeks. So I personally cannot go do my makeup without going in with a blush. It just adds a really nice pop of color to your cheeks and just wakens you up a little bit. Now I'm going to go in with this one here and it is from NYX and it is in the shade Bittersweet. Now I really like NYX blushes. They're very affordable. They're more of a drugstore price and they have really nice pigment and they go on very smooth. And this one, I love this color for fall and winter. It's more of a like a mauve purpley pinkish color, so it's super pretty. So I'm gonna go in with my blush brush, and then I'm just going to tap off the excess, and then just start adding that to my cheeks. Now, I personally like to blend my blush back towards my temples. Some people just like to keep it on the apples of their cheeks, 
But for me personally, I like blending it back because I feel like blending it back also creates more of like a lifted appearance. It just helps like sculpt it out a little more and add a little bit more color back there. I'm not afraid to build up my blush color because I personally like my blush to be a little bit stronger because I like it. So don't be afraid to build it up a little bit, especially if you get more oily, your products are more than likely going to fade throughout the day. So if you build it up a little bit initially, um, of course, don't go overboard to where you look like a clown, but if you build it up a little bit initially, that'll just help it stay on and last a little bit longer because then it'll fade throughout the day. So then it won't, um, you know, be pretty much like transparent to where you not, to where you can't see it. It'll just help it out a little bit more. Okay. And then the last step that I go in with is highlighting. So I'm going to go in with my personal favorite highlighter and it is Champagne Pop from Bucket Cosmetics. It's just a really pretty champagne color. Really anybody of any skin, skin tone can wear this. So going in with my highlighter brush, if I can find it. Hang on a second. And then I'm just going to dip in to the highlighter, tap off the excess, and then you'll go on the high points of your cheeks. Now, I also like to bring it around like the sides of my temples and up towards the tail of my brow because it'll create a C shape. So then whichever you know angle you're at in the light, the light will hit that and then you'll have all angles of highlight on the side of your face and it just creates a really pretty effect on the skin. And I'll also take that highlight in the Cupid's bow because this is going to help enhance your lips a little bit more. And then some people don't like to do this, but I personally do. I'll take my highlight and go in the center of my nose, right on the tip of the nose. I just think it looks really cute, personally. But if you don't like it, then you don't have to do this stuff. And then as for highlight, if you have any texture, you do not want to put highlight wherever you have that texture. So if you have a breakout somewhere, do not put this there because that'll just enhance the breakout and make it stand out more. If you have like little textured bumps that sometimes people get on their skin, do not put it there. It'll enhance the bumps. If you have pores, do not put it on your pores. It'll make your pores look larger and you'll just get oilier quicker throughout the day because it'll enhance the shine. So just keep it where you're smoother on the high points of your cheeks. Some people, if they're drier, they can you know, dust a little bit on the center of their forehead if they want, or a little bit on their chin, if they wanna add a little bit more glow to their skin. But for me, that's just not gonna work because I get oilier in the center of my skin, or in the center of my face, and then that's where my pores are the largest. So it'll just enhance everything. So I keep that away from the danger zone. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup, and then I will be right back. Okay, so my makeup is complete, and then this is the final look as far as what my complexion looks like once I get it all done. Now, the very last step in your complexion routine or in your makeup routine in general is that you will go in with a setting spray. Now, I personally don't have one just because I haven't been using one for the last month or month and a half, and that is because I ran out of mine. I just never bought another one, but I've also been noticing that without using one, I feel like my foundation has been laying longer on my face, I guess you could say, and not getting oily as quickly. And I feel like the reason is because when you use a setting spray, that's going to take away from the powdery finish of your makeup and melt the powders into your skin. So since I do get more oily in my T-zone area, I feel like with the setting spray, I would get oily a little quicker since it's taking that powdery finish away versus now to where I have more of that powder finish sitting onto my skin. It's just lasting a little longer as far as oil control. But you can totally go in with a setting spray if you prefer. The reason that you go in with it is just so it can help melt the powders into your skin and then prolong the wear of your makeup. But yeah, so this is you know, the final product of what it looks like. And then before I forget, I wanted to show this to you in the beginning of the video, but I forgot, so I'm going to show it to you now. But when I get breakouts, I have been liking um, these acne dots here. They're the Peace Out Acne Dots. And what these are, are um, medicated little like sticker dots that you put over top of like your blemishes. And what it has in it is um, salicylic acid, vitamin A, and aloe vera. So aloe vera is going to help with calming and soothing redness. And then salicylic acid is of course a good ingredient for if you have breakouts, that's going to help medicate it and help 
reduce the breakout. Now I've been liking these. You get 20 acne healing dots in this box. I get mine from Sephora and I actually ran out of mine. So it's like apparent that I like them and I do want to get more. So I've been liking these for my face. Whenever I get a breakout, I put them on at night. You could also put them on during the daytime, which I have done before. Like if I'm just staying around at home and not wearing makeup, um, I did notice that there was a reduce in the size of my, you know, my acne spots whenever I did wear them. And they're really inexpensive. They're, I believe, around 19 or 20 for a pack of 20 of them. So, I mean, they're a pretty good deal and I really recommend them. I can list them down below if you're ever interested. But yeah, and they also cover up like the acne too. So then if you do decide to run out maybe to the grocery store or something really quick, you'll have something covering like your acne because it's it's gonna be more of like a beigey color. So I mean, if you're lighter in skin tone, then it'll blend in. But if you're a little bit darker in skin tone, you may be able to notice the, the dot a little bit more. But I really do like them and I do recommend them. So if you wanna check these out, it's definitely a nice investment, I feel like. But I do go to, I mean, I do go to the dermatologist for my acne. This is just something that I like to do in between because I do get hormonal based acne. So I'm on like two creams twice a day. And then I am also on um, like an antibiotic. So I pulse dose with an antibiotic whenever I feel like I need to use it. So now it's just like that time of the month. So I'm having like one breakout. And then, like I said earlier, I just scar so easily. So it sucks sometimes, but what are you gonna do? But yeah, so that's all I have for today's video. I hope you learned something today. And keep in mind, like I said earlier in the video, you can use these tips and tricks that I gave to you today and apply them to the products that you use that work for your skin. But if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll get back to you. Remember, feel free to subscribe, share, and like my video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.